So in order to build the wireframe for our prototype, I want to introduce a concept called Zen Coding. Zen Coding is included if you have the Web Essentials extension installed as described in Module 1. Zen Coding is going to allow us to build up our sites with a lot of shortcuts and shorthand. And the shorthand is based on CSS syntax. So for example, if I want to create a H1, I can just type the tag name and hit tab, and it'll generate the complete tag for me. But if I wanted to create an H1 with a class name, like heading, by putting the period and then the heading, which is the same as the CSS selector syntax, it'll go ahead and know that I want to create an H1 with a heading. Same applies for IDs, so if I do a pound heading, it's going to go ahead and create an H1 with the ID included in it. In the same way, you can create structure by using the greater than symbol that's going to dictate that this next item should be nested inside the first item. So if I do a div with an H1, we're going to get that structure implied. It also allows us to multiply how many times certain tags happen. So if I wanted to create, let's say, an unordered list and then some list items, that could certainly create that structure for me. But if I do asterisk 5, it'll know to create five of those list items for me. So the syntax here is relatively simple to just create quick structure. But I want to go a little deeper to talk about how to build and scaffold some of this UI that we're going to want. So we may want at the top a div called message header that contains an H1 that has as its sibling a paragraph tag. So instead of it being nested inside of H1, the plus allows me to say it's going to be a sibling of, and I'll go ahead and apply the class of lead. And this works pretty quickly. One thing to note is that if you're only building divs, you can omit them because div is the default type for IDs and class declarations. So by omitting the div and message header, it knows to create a div for me. Let's go ahead and just call this message board for our home page. And I'll just put latest messages. And we can now see that obviously we built some markup and it's simply showing what we've generated. For creating the structure of our messages that we're going to style and then eventually fill in with data, let's do this again. Let's start with a messages div that we're going to work from and then maybe have a message div that's going to contain each message itself. So unsurprisingly it's going to create this structure of nested divs. I also might want in the message to define some structure like a title div and as its sibling, a date div, and also as its sibling, a contents div. And I'll go down the line with a toolbar div, and then finally a replies div. And so you can see pretty quickly we can create the structure of what we're looking for. Zen coding also includes the idea of grouping. So let's say I wanted this title div to just have some content. I could say greater than and then using the curly braces, I can put in literal content, like the title. The problem is that because the date thinks it's a sibling, it thinks it's a sibling of the title because it's directly after it, not a sibling of the title div itself. So it created the extra nesting that we really didn't want. And Zen coding gets around this by creating groups. So this is going to be a group that contains some structure to it so that now we're getting what we want. The title is going to have literal content and then all the other pieces will continue to be siblings. So again, we're using parentheses to imply these groups. Now I don't like putting that much literal content in here. I'd like to just put some dummy text in there and lorem ipsum is a common way to do that. Lorem ipsum is actually built into Zen coding as well. So I can just say lorem and it will build a lorem ipsum paragraph for me as the title. But I don't really want titles that long, so let's go ahead and use a number after lorem to indicate how many words I want in lorem. Let's say five for the title. So we're starting to see some of that structure become real. And because I might want more than one message, let's create another group around the entire 
thing for, that is below messages so then I can use the times five to create a whole set of these. You can see that we're now creating multiple messages on our page. Now the rest of the divs are there, the structure's there, but because only the title has structure in it, that's why we're only getting it there. So let's amend this to add some dummy dates as well. Let's create a group wrapper around it and say that we're gonna just say February 12th, 2013 is the date. Let's do the same for contents, but in this case I'm gonna use the entire lorem for the contents. And now we're starting to see some of that structure. Title, date, contents. Title, date, contents, etc. And there's five of them. We're almost to where I'm going to be happy to stop using Zen Coding, but let's go ahead and do this with Toolbar as well. And what I'm going to do for Toolbar is actually create a button inside the Toolbar. So I'm going to say Button. And there is a Bootstrap class called BTN that specifies the look and feel of Bootstrap buttons. So I'm just going to add that. And I want it to be a primary button, so I'll give it that class as well from Bootstrap, button-primary. And I'd also like it to have a special class so I can wire up events to it if I need to. So I'll call it the reply button. And as a child of that, I'm going to give it some literal text so that the button has some data on it. So we're starting to see that structure really build itself out. And finally, let's use the Bootstrap grid system to define how we want this stuff to look. So under message, I'm going to add a class called row. And row is going to allow me to specify spans inside the row that are nested. The reason for this is there may be a span inside the index above us. We don't want to be limited by any padding that may be at the top level. So we're saying we're going to create a brand new row for each message, and then we can use spans inside that row. So I'm going to say the title is going to span 10 across and the date is going to span 2. But once I start using spans, I'm going to want to use it all the way across. So let's go over to contents and add span 12 because I want it to be wide. Span 12 because I want that to be wide. And then finally, same with replies. And now we can actually see some structure. We can see because it's 10 and 2 that the dates are being pushed over to the right. But as we change size, these things are going to end up being stacked. Title, date, contents, toolbar at the bottom. So this example of this Zen coding is something that you may or may not do. It may be worth learning the syntax in order to create these structures, but I'm using one that's fairly elaborate so you can see the complexity and the power of it. I like using the Zen coding because if I wanted to prototype 20, it's as simple as undoing, changing some of the numbers, and creating a fairly large structure without having to do a lot of copy and paste. I'm going to leave it at 5. And now we're going to take this structure and apply some CSS design on top of it. 